Hello and welcome to this Tutor to You video looking at the BTEC National Health and Social Care Unit 1 exam paper in 15 minutes, focusing on human lifespan development. Hi Liz, how are you? Hi Lynn, I'm good, thank you. Shall we get started then? Let's go. So Liz, tell us a bit about the format of the paper. Okay, so for Unit 1 there is just one exam paper and you sit this either in January or June of each year. It's a 90 minute paper and there are 90 total marks available, so that means you've got one minute per mark, so it's quite tough. There are 15 questions in total, spread over three sections. There's a mixture of short answer questions which are worth one to six marks and extended response questions which are worth six to ten marks. Um, each section starts with quite an easy, relatively easy short answer question and then it builds in difficulty throughout the section. Um, but because the paper kind of resets at each section, this means that everyone should be able to answer questions across the whole exam paper. Brilliant. So just for students thinking about the topics, how mm -hmm. are the topics mapped to the question types? OK, so you've got assessment outcomes one, two, three and four, which are shown on the screen there. The first one is a knowledge recall um, assessment outcome. So that's about PIEs, factors affecting growth and development across the life stages. The second one is an understanding. So that's um, recall, but with a little bit more detail on the same topics. So that's your two, four and six mark questions. And then assessment outcome three is analyzing and evaluating information in relation to theories and models. And assessment outcome four is about making connections between those theories and models and how they relate to growth and development. So that's your 10 mark questions. Okay, brilliant. So it gets a bit more tricky as students go along. Mm -hmm. So tell us what can students kind of expect then from the questions that they're looking at? Yep, so most questions have a short contextual statement at the beginning, so like a little scenario or mini case study. Um, you might be asked to identify life stages and age ranges, define a key term or explain the difference between key terms. There's always a data interpretation question, so you get a graph, a data table or a chart. Um, you'll have questions on PIE's growth and development and the factors affecting it. There'll be questions that Really, you need to draw on knowledge from multiple areas, just one learning aim, but all of them. Yeah, you will yeah. definitely have to apply your knowledge of theories and models to all your extended response questions. So all your six and ten markers, even if the question doesn't specifically say, according to which theory or model, talk about theories and models that you know. And then the thing that kind of catches people out, perhaps, is that 50 of the total marks available are in the form of 10 mark questions. So you really need to practice those. And the key to that is having a balanced argument or a balanced discussion. OK, brilliant. So for unit one then, so command words. So when you are um, doing your short answer questions, can you tell us what command words to expect in the paper? Yep. So we've got the identify command word, which is worth one or two marks. Um, the most basic question that you'll get, identify the life stages and age ranges of individuals in a context. So for example, um, the red text there is is an um, acceptable way to answer this question. So you don't need to write a full sentence, you can just write early childhood, three to eight years, and that would get you a mark. Adolescence, nine to 18 years, that would get you a second mark. So it's literally one or two word answers. State questions, also the most basic question you'll get, one or two marks, um, often used with the, um, the data interpretation question. So for example, you might get state the percentage of, and you literally just write 98% for your mark. Um, remember to always add in the units, really important. The other type of question that is low value is outline. These are two or four mark questions. So for example, on the screen outline what is meant by the terms nature and nurture. So for these outline questions, because you're being out asked to outline something, a concept, a meaning, a definition, you need to write in a short sentence. Okay, brilliant. So what I'm getting from you then so far for our, when we think about our exam gold, when we're asked to identify, state or outline something, students should be answering briefly with one or two word answers. So nice, short and sweet. Read the question carefully and give what is specifically required. So if it asks for a physical factor, emotional or social will not be credited, even if that's accurate. So be really careful when you're reading those questions. Check your answer matches the context and be precise. And don't waste time repeating the question or just describing and explaining something because it's just an identified state or outline. Exactly, Brilliant. thank you, Lynn. So if I go on to tell you about some of the other 
um, short answer command words because there are some others. So outline, as we said, two or four marks, describe two or four marks and explain two or four marks. So another type of outline question you might be asked is um, to outline ways in which factors or life events affect people. So the example on the screen, outline two ways that low income could lead to a poor diet. So to answer this, you need to have sentences that provide an overview of something such as the ways that poor diet could, um, um, low income, sorry, could lead to a poor diet. For describe, you're often asked to describe two ways for something, so two ways that redundancy could affect an individual's emotional well-being or health and well-being. So to answer this, you need to have sentences that give details, you need to look at cause and effect, or the difference between two concepts. And then explain. For explain, whether they're two or four marks, you need to be using sentences that explain how, why, or when something occurs, such as explaining the difference between two things or the difference in impact on growth and development of something, or for example, as on screen, explain the difference between gross and fine motor skills. So you need to show that you understand how, why, or when those things are different. Brilliant. Thanks, Liz. So Itch, can you show us then an example question and how a student might answer it and how the marks might be awarded? Absolutely. So we'll take that example I just said, explain the difference between gross and fine motor skills for four marks. So you're looking to provide two kind of two parts to your response. The first one about gross motor skills and then showing the difference between that and fine motor skills. So for example, gross motor skills use the larger muscles in the arms, leg and torso to achieve balance and movement, for example, riding a two wheel bike. Whereas, so that's a nice connective to show contrast, fine motor skills use the small muscles in the fingers, hands and wrists to achieve precise and controlled actions, for example, using a pen for handwriting. So we are getting um, our first marks in each each case for clearly showing what a gross motor skill is and what a fine motor skill is and then we um, move on to show how this contrasts with a fine motor skill and explain its use so if I just reveal all the ticks I think that's easier so in the first part gross motor skills use the large muscles in the arms legs and torso that gets you a mark then you say um, what they are used for and how so that gives you the second mark and then you contrast that with fine motor skills what they are and then how you use them. And that really clearly answers the question. It's an, an explanation that shows the difference. Brilliant, what about this one then? So if they're having to outline two ways that low income could lead to a poor diet, how could they uh, address this one? Yep, so I'm just gonna reveal all the ticks from the beginning, I think, because I think it's easier. Okay, so due to cost, parents may prioritize the quality of their children's diet over their own. So that's a way. And then we need to complete our outline. So we need to fully, you know, say what we're talking about here. So meaning that parents lack essential nutrients such as protein, which is more expensive. So you're saying a way that low income leads to a poor diet, but then you're expanding to fully explain the link, the impact. Um, students often don't do that second part. So they might do the first part and think, yeah, I've done it, but you haven't, you haven't shown, you know, how or why that exactly leads to a poor diet. Same in the second one, difficulties in paying gas and electricity bills may make storing or cooking food challenging. So that's a way. And then you're saying how it leads to the poor diet, which leads to consumption of high fat, salt and sugar convenience foods. So it's about remembering that you've not just got to give the way, you've got to say how that happens or why that happens. Brilliant. Thank you. So what I'm getting from you then, so when we think about these slightly um, higher mark, four, um, two to four mark questions, when they're outlined, describe and explain, lots of specialist language and mm -hmm. key terms from health and social care that you've learned from your teaching and the specification. And you must show you understand how, what, why or when, because that gets you the second mark in most responses. And it's mar they're marked in pairs, aren't they? Identify Absolutely. and explain. Yeah. And don't don't waste time repeating the question in your answer and check your answer matches the requirements of the question and is relevant to any context that that is there. Absolutely. Brilliant. So let's think about those extended response question, though. So these are the six and ten markers. Can you tell us about these? I can. Yeah. So for your six markers, the command words tend to be discuss and describe. 
So for example, discuss the influence of attachment experiences in infancy on health and well-being throughout the lifespan. So for a discuss or a describe, describe question with six marks, you definitely need to use sentences. You're explaining in detail how a factor or a life event influences health and well-being. You need to show more than one side of the perspective. You need to link to theories and models and you need to have a logical balanced answer. Remember, it is a discussion or a description. Um, you need to have balance in these six markers and you need to support with evidence and examples. Ten markers are kind of an extension of that. Command words are typically to what extent, evaluate and assess. So you really need to be making a judgment in these questions. It's not merely just a discussion. You need to make a judgment, probably reach a conclusion by the end. So there's two examples on the screen. Evaluate the impact of alcohol consumption on an individual's health and well-being. And then the second example, to what extent can language development in children and infants be explained by nature arguments? So to do these evaluations, these to what extents, which means how far do you agree with something, you need sentences that discuss in detail how far one argument or theory or model is valid. So you need to show knowledge of different arguments and perspectives to contrast with that because that helps you to show whether it's valid or not. You need to look at how they interrelate or oppose one another. And again, you need to have a logical answer that's balanced and supported by evidence and examples. Brilliant. So can you talk us through how to approach these then? I can. So I'm not going to give you like a full model answer because there's not enough space on the screen. What I'm going to do instead is talk you through how I expect a student to approach this question, what kind of content I would expect them to put in it. So the question is, to what extent, so that means how far, can language development in children and infants be explained by nature factors? So obviously you need to think about this in terms of theories, models and explanations. We need to look at those that support nature arguments versus those that refute or oppose nature arguments. So remember nature is about um, models that are universal, apply to all children or all adults across the world. They are um, influenced by biology or genetics or factors that are innate or inerrant or you're born with or things that you're biologically programmed to do. That's nature. So we need to look at theories and models that support that and the ones that are counter to that, which is, of course, nurture arguments. So nurture arguments are all about how your environment influences you. So we don't just mean environment as in buildings and rivers. We mean everything external to your body. Sometimes students get confused about that. So environmental... Um, Arguments, factors are about everything that is external to your body. So influence of school, parents, peers, role models, as well as your environment. So in this case, we're going to be contrasting, I would expect you to contrast, Chomsky, who is um, a linguist and has his uh, language acquisition device theory, which is a nature theory, with Bandura, which is a nurture theory. You could also use Gessel, whose biological maturation theory is a nature theory. And you could also contrast with Piaget, who actually had a little bit of both, a little bit of nature and a little bit of nurture. You do need to re reach a conclusion by the end of your um, answer. The most important thing is not necessarily what side of the argument you fall on, but whether you've actually presented evidence and reasoning and a rationale for how you reached your conclusion. So not whether you argue one way or the other, or if you say it's maybe in the middle, but it's about the quality of your answer and what evidence you're using to support your answer. I'm expecting students to provide an answer that's premised on two counter arguments. So nature, Chomsky, so his idea that we're all born with an innate ability to learn language and that the stages of language development are universal. So all children in all countries, um, when they're born, they cry to communicate. Then they maybe start cooing, then they start babbling, then they start trying to speak. That happens in every country, regardless of your environment or your culture that you're brought up in. Versus the idea that language development is more about nurture, and social learning theory, Bandura, which says that we would learn language from those people around us. So children that are not encouraged to speak or do not hear others don't speak. So that's what I want you to I want to see in this answer is you know an, an examination of both of those things and then providing evidence to support each side of the argument and then reach a conclusion at the end, which one do you think is more convincing? And it doesn't matter what um 
you know, theory or model or question we're having, it's always going to be the same kind of structure that I want to see. So, you know, what are the two main theories or main ideas? Contrast them, look at the evidence and then reach a conclusion, essentially. And there are 50 marks available on these type of answers. So it is really worth practising um, writing a balanced argument. It's really valuable to think about all of the theories and models in terms of which ones are nature, which ones are nurture, and which ones are a mixture of the two. I think that's the most important thing that you can, the most important way to categorise your, your theories and models. So I think we've just got this to go, Lynn. Okay, brilliant. Yeah, so you've got about five, ten markers in the whole paper, haven't you? Mm -hmm. So that's what I'm hearing from you, and you need that flip side. Yeah. So, um, yeah, let's get this right then when answering the ten mark questions. Students should be writing in sentences and paragraphs that are detailed and logical. Again, they should be demonstrating their answers through accurate knowledge by using that health and social care terminology. Give relevant examples and link your points appropriately to the context of the question. Okay. Um, apply knowledge of theories and models to different context so don't forget your theories and models provide a well balanced answer well developed with advantages and disadvantages and strengths and weaknesses and make sure for those 10 markers you have reached your conclusions Brilliant. absolutely okay so yes. I i'm not sure did we do it in 15 minutes i hope we did I hope so. <laughs> yeah. okay Thanks so for listening yeah good luck to everyone bye